What's up guys? It's amazing to see you here today on this channel. A lot of you guys have been watching us and you've been asking several questions. In today's episode, we are going to answer the questions that you've been asking us in the comment section below. So if you watch this and then you have other further questions, you would like to also note them down there. In any of our episodes that you watch, you can just note down your questions and then we'll bring up other episodes to give answers to them. So let's look at the questions that some of you guys asked for today's episode. Can a busy professional worker like your banker start a firm? Yes, we have other professionals who are fish farmers. A lot of my farmers, a lot of you guys who watch us are actually doing the fish farming as a secondary activity. So they can have a farm. But what you need to understand is you need to factor your schedules into the farming. And so if you leave your house, let's say around 6.30 to 7 before you leave to work, then you, you should know that you can feed your fish around 6.30. But then because you do, we do a lot of water changes during our production time, if let's say you are running a farm in the week and you stock your fish on Monday, the next water change is going to be on Wednesday. And so if it happens that you are supposed to change your water, you just wake up quite earlier before the time, around 5.30, change the water for your tank, give the fish about 30 minutes to recover from the stress, then you can feed them around your 6.30 before you leave. But then in the evening when you come back from your work, around maybe 4 p.m. or 5 p.m., around 5 p.m. is also ideal for you to come and feed your fish. So during the weekend, that is when you do any other major activity in your farm. For example, if you are running a recirculatory system, it is during the weekend that you check your valves, you check all of your filters and everything to note that it is okay and you don't have any problem over there. It's the same time where you have to, if there's any cleaning of the tank to do, this is the time for which you can do that. And normally, within an hour to maximum of two hours, let's say on a Saturday morning, you can be done and then you can look forward to the next day. Is it advisable to keep your tank under sunlight? Yes, it is good for you to keep your fish tank under sunlight. Why? From my observations, I've realized that when you have your fish tank in the sunlight, the sunlight helps or makes the fish more active. Secondly, when you have enough sunlight, bacteria activity in your pond reduces because bacteria normally do thrive in a cooler environment. So the sun comes in there to reduce possible bacteria activity in your tank. How do you count to know the number of fishes in your tank after the time? So when it comes to counting to know the quantity of fish you have in your tank, it is normally important that on the day of stocking, you take every single detail of the quantity of fingerlings that you have. For example, if the farmer gave you 110 pieces of fingerlings, from that day, you note it down in your record sheet. So every single time you change your water or any single time you do anything in your pond, you know down any mortality so that at any point in time, you will be able to just check that sheet and know the quantity of fish you have in your tank. What type of pond do I need for personal consumption? When it comes to personal consumption, we normally recommend that you use the square tank because you are looking at about just 70 pieces of fish at the end of six months and you are going to use that in your home so a square tank will be ideal for that but then if you want more than 70 let's say like a 200 then we may recommend that you look at a capoline tank that could serve any quantity above the 70. how often do i need to feed my fish feeding of your fish will be dependent on the size of your fingerlings so if you pick a fingerlings depending on the size of the fish you may require to either feed them three times a day or two times a day. So for younger fish, normally when they come to your farm, what you have to notice is sometimes the feeding is done twice in a day. So if you are feeding them three times in a day, then you do 8 a.m., 12 p.m., and then 4 p.m. on that particular day. Or you can do 9 a.m., 1 p.m., and then 5 p.m. What you have to understand is the feeding will be a percentage of the fish. So you take an average size of the fish. So if you have, let's say, 100 fishes in the pond, you take at random 10 pieces of the fish, you get the average size of that fish. 
then you take a percentage of the fish. So sometimes we do from 5% to 2% of the fish, depending on the size of the fish. Then that will be the quantity of feed that you feed your fish in a day. Should the water be flushed out completely before bringing in any one? When it comes to draining water in your fish tank, catfish are hardy fish. For that reason, they can accommodate a lot of changes and a lot of things that you may do in your tank. So for us, in our square tanks and in our tarpaulin tank, we normally flush out all the water, then we replenish the water. But most importantly, you need to understand that when you are flushing out the water, it shouldn't take you too long to flush out the water. It shouldn't take you too long to refresh whatever water that's supposed to be in the pond. So normally, we look at a 30 minutes mark for flushing out the water and 30 minutes mark for replenishing the water. And if you have to feed the fish, then what you have to notice, after 30 minutes of giving them new water, you wait for extra 30 minutes for them to acclimatize into the new environment before you feed them so that they can eat properly. Can I use square tank throughout? Yes, it is possible for you to use square tank throughout. We have farms where people are just using square tanks and they have fish as big as 1.5 kg and above. The most important thing for you to know is you need to understand the stocking density of your tank and then by that you will be able to use that for your production. If I use a recycling tool system, will I need to change the water? First of all, it is important for you to understand the importance of a recirculatory system. A recirculatory system is a system that is going to help you to maintain a certain amount of water. So for that purpose, you run whatever water that is running through your fish tank, but then there will be a filter that will take out most of the solids and the waste and ammonia gas that will be developed in your tank. And for this reason, when it comes to a recirculatory system, you would need a mechanical filter and a biological filter, and the water will go back into your pond. So depending on how efficient your filter is, you may change water in two weeks or maybe every three days, depending on the efficiency of your filter. And so most of the time, it, we advise farmers that take time to build a proper filtration system so that you can do your, research, your changing of water maybe after two weeks or after a month. Now, if you have a recirculating system that is very efficient in terms of filtering your water, then most of the time you lose some water to evaporation and then also for changes of water from your filtration system. And so at the end of the day, we normally fill back about just 10% of the water that we may need for the production. How long does it take for catfish to mature? The size of your catfish, first of all, will depend on the size you are looking at. Most of the time, we look at one kg size of fish. So for one kg size of fish, we, we look at the size of fingerlings that you would use to stock. Some people go in for fingerlings, some people go in for juveniles. If you are going in for juveniles or post-juveniles, by four months of proper feeding methods, you should have your fish matured at one kg. But if you go for maybe some fingerlings that may be below 10 grams, then it could take you six months for production to, for your fish to mature. All the same, sometimes we tell people that don't work with the four months unless you are well vested in what you are doing. Other than that, give yourself some breather and then extend the production to five months if you take it in juvenile. What happens when your fish Catfish is not going to lay eggs in your tarpaulin pond, your square tanks, or your concrete tanks. reason why they are not going to lay eggs in those tanks is because they need a certain condition for them to be able to lay those eggs. And they, most of the time, we don't have those conditions being present in our ponds. And for that reason, they will not even lay eggs for any reproduction to happen in your tank. So if you are a farmer, then what you have to understand is you just harvest them, finish with those set of fish, and then get new set of fingerlings, and then now you can continue your production process. Can someone living in a rented apartment start up a fish farm? It is possible that you can start a fish farm being in a rented apartment. First of all, you need a space. Secondly, you need a permit of your landlord. And then thirdly, you have to ask yourself, do I live with other people? If you do live with other people, then you have to channel the drainage properly 
into whatever sewage that is available to where you are. Other than that, then the next thing you like to look at is also security. So make sure that you're able to secure your tanks and whatever thing you are doing properly if you live in a rented space. How often should the water be changed? When it comes to water changes, one, it depends on the volume of water, the density, the stocking density of the pond, the size of your fish. So for example, if you have a pond, a pond that is using 10 liters of water per fish, sometimes you can change the water every three days. You understand? So after every three days, you can change your water for your farm. Can I use borehole water? Yes. Most of the farms that we have set up are actually using borehole water. Some parts of Accra have a lot of salinity issues. So when you want to use the borehole water, you need to run a test without water from the CSIR Water Research Center. They are going to tell you the values that your borehole water has whether there are hard metals or any compounds in the pond in the water that you do not want. And if they give you the clearance, you can use that to run the fish water. Is tarpaulin more reliable than the other type of pond? All types of ponds are reliable for you to use. The only thing you need to understand is you need to know what kind of pond you are using and how to maintain the pond. Normally, we recommend that for new farmers, because you are now entering into the business, you should just opt for a tarpaulin because with a tarpaulin it is easy for you to handle and manage easy to set up easy to move them so if you have a change of plan for your setup it is easy for you to move the fish tank from one place to the other after years when you have realized that you are so much well vested with information and other things in the business you can go ahead and set up your concrete tank is it safe to pump water straight from your well into the tank when it comes to pumping of water from any source at all, most of the time we recommend that you should have a reservoir. The reason is sometimes you may have problems with the source of water and there may be a need for you to treat the water in one way or the other. For this reason, we tell people that let's make sure your source water goes into a reservoir and then from the reservoir it goes into your fish tank. And then if you want to run a proper fish farm, Almost every single time, or most of the time, make sure that you check the source water properly, that the water is in the right parameters before you introduce them into your fish tank. But there are a lot of farms here in Ghana that do direct from their well or their boreholes into their fish tank. How do you provide oxygen? Oxygen is introduced into your tank through different, different ways. Most of the time, it happens on the surface of your water. So any activity on the surface of your water can introduce oxygen into your pump. So if you have a pump somewhere that is suctioning water from your pond and then splashing it on top of your pond, it will introduce oxygen into your pond. Another thing you can use to introduce oxygen into your tank will be an aerator. And this aerator has diffusers and it will pump a lot of oxygen into your tank. But it is very important for you to know that the aerator that you will choose should be able to pump the exact amount of volume of water in your tank within a space of an hour. So what I mean is if you have a tank that has 10,000 liters of water, at the end of the day, if you are buying any aerator, buy an aerator that can pump 10,000 liters of oxygen into your tank within an hour. Another thing too that we have, we have the propellers. That's one, we use them in the very big fish pond. So when you go to the cage farms and also in the very big lakes and other well dug earthen ponds, they have these things over there that will just be moving and be splashing water on top of the water to, to introduce the oxygen into the pond. How do I get customers for my fish? When it comes to customers for your fish, first of all, production, as we always say, should be influenced by demand. And so most of the time, before you even start the fish farm, you sometimes need to go out there and find out who will be interested in your fish. We have a lot of individuals who are moving away from meat-based diet to fish-based diet. And for this reason, these people can be people that you can look at in terms of your produce from your farm. Another set of people that may be interested in your fish will be the restaurant. You are looking at restaurants that serve fish or catfish-based diet. 
So you can just go to them and then tell them you have quality fish at whatever way they want it. They'll tell you the size or they'll tell you whether you should process it by smoking or you should give it to them fresh. Then moving on from there, there are the markets and then the supermarkets. Now these people are also looking for, most of them are looking for smoked catfish so you can process and then give it to them and then become their regular supplier. There are other things that you can do with your catfish to introduce you to more markets and other bigger markets like the fillet, the fish powder and amongst other things as well. For tarpaulins, fingerlings and feed, when you contact us, Latman Farms, we'll leave our contact over here and then also in the description section below where you can just reach out to us. We'll look at, most of the time, we come and check your place, do a feasibility study, then we'll recommend a tarpaulin that will fit your capacity. And setting up the tarpaulin, we'll come, we'll set it up for you, we'll come and give you the fingerlings. And then we have a few partnerships with some of the fish food manufacturing companies so we can arrange and then have your feed too at your place. At the end of it all, we'll also give you a fish feeding chart that you can follow to know the quantity of feed to give your fish every single time and all of that. Where is your next Alright, so our next training is coming up on the 31st of March and the 1st of April. There will be a two-day training where we are going to explain to you much more into aquaculture production systems Ponds, build, filtration, and everything that you need to know so that when you set up your farm, you will be ahead of the curve. If you'd like to join our next training, there is a number that has been displayed. You can just reach out to us and then you'll be registered as a participant of our next training. Thank you very much and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.